This is photograph 51. It's a print of arguably one of the most important objects we hold in King's College London archives and one of the most important photographs ever taken. It's a photograph of a piece of DNA that has been photographed using X-ray diffraction analysis showing the distinctive cross pattern and it was a photograph taken in the spring of 1952 by Ray Gosling and Rosalind Franklin here at King's College London. Now this was key in determining the helical structure of DNA and it was next year in 1953 in the spring of 1953 that Watson and Crick of Cambridge developed a model explaining how DNA worked. It's the model we still use today and published a paper in Nature alongside two other ones by teams at King's College London. But how did the team here at King's get to this stage? And that's where some of the material here comes in. So these are samples of dry DNA from the early 1950s, from 1950 in fact, calf thymus DNA. And they were provided by Rudolf Signer from Switzerland. He was a scientist who came to London and provided it free of charge. Samples of the DNA were rehydrated and they were suspended in apparatus like this one here. This would have fitted inside a camera. And you can actually see here a real sample of DNA that has been hydrated and strung between these two points. And this would have been mounted inside a camera, a large camera array, and an X-ray source beam through it. Now, Ray Gosling, who was a PhD student, and the newly recruited Rosalind Franklin got to work on analysing DNA using this camera here. And this micro camera really enabled very clear photographs like photograph 51 to be taken. Hydrogen is pumped in through this columnator here. This is because air will fog the film won't produce clear pictures, so hydrogen has to be used. An X-ray source comes in here, and inside the camera, which unscrews like this, the sample is mounted. Now, a single exposure and setup could take up to 100 hours. So this was painstaking, deliberative work by scientists at the top of their game. And it was through these experiments that Photograph 51 was obtained and that the results were published in 1953. They had to be interpreted in the meantime. And for this, the team used mathematics. And this is an example of Maurice Wilkins's notebooks from the early 1950s. Um, it contains a lot of mathematics and drawings, thinking through the problem. The key member of the team was Alex Stokes, who was a mathematician and crystallographer. And he used a piece of mathematics, well-known piece of mathematics, and interpreted it to these results uh, that have been obtained by Gosling and Franklin. He predicted that the result would be a double helix, and he and others interpreted the results after the experiments had happened, proving that this was true. 